<laughs> so uh, thanks for uh, having me in your office. Delighted you're here. And who are you? <laughs> I'm Neem Casey. Yep. <laughs> and where are we right now? We're in downtown Shenzhen. Yeah. It's uh, in southern China. It's about an hour from Hong Kong uh, in mainland China. Tell me about your background. Where did you come from? Um, I'm from Cork in okay. Ireland. Yeah. Um, I grew up on a farm in Cork in Ireland. Um, then I worked for 10 years in the garment industry. Um, and Cork has some pretty good manufacturing there too. I mean, I, I know I, when I visited Cork, I saw factories from all over the place. Oh yeah, I mean, it's, it's, that's, how I, probably that's how I ended up you know, in this business because a lot of the European multinationals um, are the multinational companies at the European headquarters in Cork, or in Ireland, so they're, they're dotted around Ireland. That's why I probably saw the opportunity to bring product from Asia into, um, into Ireland. Yeah. Um, so I spent uh, 10 years in the retail the fashion business, uh, and I ended up going to, I, I gave that up and I went to, took a year off and went to California, and I lived in, um, near San Juan Capistrano yeah. in Laguna, um, just off the PCH, and that's where the name of the company comes from. Yeah, Pacific uh, Coast, Pacific Coast Hi Highway. Highway. Um, and I spent a year there, it was great fun. And I didn't have a, a, a green card or a visa for the US, so I was working on a, on a permit, on a work permit, and I was you know, going down to Tijuana to get my passport stamped, or you know, go back to Ireland to get it stamped, and then go back for another you know, this, 80 this, odd days. This is a story where our immigration policies really hurt us, right? Because we made you leave and go to China, and now you're competing with us, right? Yeah, I think that's a good thing for me, though. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have been here. <laughs> so I got to say thanks for that. Give me a <clears throat> one-minute pitch of what you do and why people would come and see, sit in the, these chairs and talk to you. We manage global supply chains for our mostly consumer electronics companies, uh, also some companies in the PC um, hardware space. Yeah. Um, so we take their concepts and ideas uh, and we turn them into real products and we ship them to wherever they want anywhere in the world and we do it in the fastest way possible most cost-effective way to do it. it. It's an interesting time to be here in China, isn't it? Yes, it's a fantastic time to be here. It's an amazing time to be here. I've been here 12 years and it's like the front row seat to the changing of the world. Yeah. Give me some sense of what's changing in China, particularly with the supply chain. All product development in China is changing. China has moved in the last couple of years from where it was made in China to now where it's created in China. So they're coming up with uh, how they're going to build products in the future. And China is probably one of the most innovative, creative, entrepreneurial places on the planet at the moment. So that, see, that's uh, as an American who doesn't spend much time here, you don't have um, an image that China is that creative or entrepreneurial, right? You, you know that they make stuff, they make things that you buy all the time, but... Yeah, but I mean, again, if you, there are certain parts of China that's extremely creative. Um, and again, you look, at the, you look at the opening ceremony of the Olympics, and you look at the show that they put on. It was phenomenal. I mean, that's a world-class show, extremely creative. Um, and that's what China is, you know, it is very creative. Yeah. We can't underestimate that. Now, when we were talking earlier, um, you really caught my interest when you said you're really being, setting in play uh, a new disruptive force. Can you tell me what you mean by that? Yeah, we talk about disruptive commerce. And disruptive commerce is where you have a disruptive technology. You've got a company in the Western world or wherever in the world that has a disruptive technology. And you take a, uh, our supply chain that we operate, which is a disruptive supply chain, and you put the two together and you get a disruptive commerce. Now, why, are, why is your supply chain disruptive? And, and explain a little bit about that. The reason why it's disruptive is because you can take a product from a factory in China, from a production line here in China, to a consumer anywhere in the world within about three to four days. Now, that's from when the product comes off the production line, when you package it. And then so it's not it. a slow boat to China no, anymore? No, no. Because uh, when I was in the airport, I saw FedEx planes lined up and Absolutely. I mean, UPS. And, yeah. and if you look at the whole, uh, the whole development of the internet, the whole the way people shop online, um, e-commerce, um, and then the whole logistics, um, improvement in, of logistics, uh, when you bring the two of those together, um, and then the whole speed of manufacturing in China and the whole capability that's available in China, uh, you bring them together, you've got 
you know, a very disruptive supply chain. Originally, back in uh, late 90s, we started in just in components, and then in 2003, we started getting into more finished products. We saw that you know China was changing, and it, no longer could you just take a component from a factory and ship it to, the, to a customer in the Western world because you know Chinese factories were getting better, and the Chinese the, the customers were getting braver. They were all going into China, so we saw that uh, as a trading company, there was no real future in that. So we saw you know we've got to go up the value chain, and we have to put in place um, different services and different. Uh, the value-add services that would, you know, ensure that we stay in business. Yeah. So the first thing we did was we put a packaging facility in place, a postponement we call it, you know, where we manage the out-of-box experience. Now we will design the packaging for the customer. Um, then the last day, step that we put in place was the fulfillment. So, you know, we take a product, now we'll bring it from a factory here in the Pearl River Delta, we'll bring it into our facility, make it, pack it and ship it, and they can have it probably in about three days. Interesting. You really study some of the better products out there, and we won't name them, but you open the box up and it's really nice, the experience, and you're yeah. really trying to recreate that for all of your And that's how clients. you build association, which, and that's how you build up loyalty with your consumers. Yeah. Now, we're not in the consumer business. We, we don't, our clients are in that business, and you know, it's, it's amazing how different clients care about different things, and you know, we find that the, one, the successful ones really care about their con, inter, how they interact with their consumers. Back to how you're dis how you're disrupting uh, the, the whole supply chain. Can we talk about Chumbi? Absolutely. So Chumbi is a great example. Chumbi is a company that um, has a disruptive technology where they actually take uh, you know the juice widgets over the internet and um, it's a wireless uh, device that you know you. It was designed at an O'Reilly food camp, right? It was de designed at a food camp, and they, they they actually were looking for somebody to make it in China, and then they went to many different factories. And, and we like companies, so we call it our China Ready, that they've made mistakes in China or you know, that they have some experience in China. And we said, we'll do all that and we'll find you know, best in class manufacturer for the leather assembly, best in class manufacturer for the plastics, and best in class uh, manufacturer for the PCB. Um, and then we'll assemble the whole thing, we'll package it, and we'll also ship it direct to your consumers. So I, I could be a geek at a party in Silicon Valley or wherever in Israel or get a, a wild haired idea, mm -hmm. give you a call. <laughs> no. No, <laughs> you got to come here and. No, 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 no. No, the first thing you got to do is you got to get VC funding. <laughs> 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 Once you get your VC funding, then you call us. Okay. Yeah, because that's because the VC funding will give you a discipline that will help us to say, hey, you know, this is, you know, VCs see a future in this and they see it as a real opportunity. Yeah. Um, and then it's, you know, then it's for us, it's real. Okay, so I, I have to put together a business plan and yeah, go and pitch a VC absolutely, and absolutely, yeah. have at least yeah. enough of a team to convince them to spend $3 million on me or whatever. Exactly. And then, then I come with my $3 million. And so. they will also understand the value of the money yeah. and they will be very safe about it. They will want a lean supply chain. They won't want you putting inventory. Like if Chumbi were to go the old conventional route, they would have had you know, thousands of Chumbis, tens of thousands of Chumbis sitting in warehouses in the US. Yeah. Whereas now, they don't have that. It's in the whole supply chain. It's here in China. So it comes off a production line and it ships direct to a consumer. So there's nothing tied up in the, in the supply chain. So the cash to cash is fantastic. Now, do you help me as well to set up the store? And oh, we'll do the web store as well for you. We'll do the e-commerce part of it for you as well. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll host the site. We'll do all that for you. We'll manage the whole transaction. The other important thing which we do is we also manage all of the compliance issues. Because you, know, you can't just come to China and say, I want to make a product and take, yeah. build a product and then ship it. There's a whole load of compliance issues if you want to ship a product to, into Europe or into the US and you've got all of the approvals that are required. We manage that whole process for you, all that, all the way through. Yeah. Uh, while we were talking this morning, it, it seemed like you have two secret sauces. One is integrity and the trust of all the people who are working with you. And one is the software that keeps track of everything. <laughs> I think they're very separate. I mean, software is a tool we use. Integrity is ingrained. And explain why. Uh, explain those two things and why. Why I care about both of them, <laughs> or you why you care about both. We care. I mean, software is a tool that, you know, when I started, when I came to China first, confusion was a competitive advantage. Okay, back then I was always looking for how do you make it transparent, how do you create visibility and transparency into a supply chain that takes away that whole confusion, yeah. okay, and makes it easy for people to understand and operate on a level playing pitch. Um, and we used software to do that. We've got a very good software package called ChinaFlow, which shows all the factories we work with. 
Um, how many, how many many we have about 900 factories in that database, factories we've visited over the years. Um, and they, I think we're actively working with about 100. But it's got, you know, it's great information. And it's just, you know, it's all the information you need to know about doing business in a factory in China. Uh, their ISO certificates, their, their, their quality history, their shipments, their clients, their suppliers, So we got, and their capabilities. So, um, and again, when I show that to some of the, the, the trading companies that, you know, that would have used confusion as a competitive advantage, they go, oh, you know, you shouldn't be given this information out because it's, you know, you know that's how they built their business. Yeah. Of course. Because they don't want the, per the company from America or wherever coming over here and then cutting them Correct. out. Right. Right. Whereas we're the opposite. And you know, China used to be a knowledge-based challenge. Okay. Where you had to. It was a knowledge-based challenge where you had to, you know, have a database of factories and you had to know where everything was. And it, because of the confusion, knowledge was power. Okay. Today it's an execution-based challenge because everyone has the knowledge. It's so easy. You can go to, you know, any of the websites that are so many sites that um, uh, portals that give you access to factories in China. So yeah. it's no longer a knowledge-based challenge. It's purely an execution-based challenge. And here, what we do is it's world-class execution. It's how we take a product from a production line in China and ship it to anywhere in the world. So that's one of the big changes. And when we, I mean, we, we work very, very transparent with our clients. You know, once we sign up with a client, we give them all the information up front. We, you know, every factory we, know, we work with knows where the product is going. Every client knows where the product is coming from. So we take that confusion away, straight away. And we also, take, by, doing, by giving the information, you take the value off the knowledge and you put it back onto the execution. Integrity is because that's a differentiator. That's what we do. That's what, you know, there's, China is very misunderstood in many ways, okay, in the Western world. And they're very honorable people, they're very, very straight. Once you can deal with them face to face and you, you're honorable, they're honorable with you. And give me a sense of where the integrity comes Inte into play. Is it non yeah. disclosures and making it, sure that things stay secret? Or? No, integrity for us is about, you know, it's about how we work and how we work with our you know, whether it's internally within the company, whether it's how we work with our suppliers, we never devalue the work of the factories, yeah. okay? If we haven't got great factories, we can't have a great company. So we really, you know, go out of our way to make sure that we do have, you know, a great supply base. Yeah. Do you, is some American companies, will, well, many of them will worry about um, all sorts of labor issues and making sure that their supply chain is not, doesn't have kids involved in it and stuff like that, or is, are you working on environmental issues to make sure that you're not going to get tagged in America? You know? All of the above. We work with um, BSR, Business for Social Responsibility, as a, an organization. They work with us to help us to ensure that, you know, if we find a factory that we want to work with and if we think that the factory really care and the people that own the factory really care, we'll invest the time and effort to get them to a standard where they can. Yeah. And that's what they want. I mean, I get Chinese companies coming to me today that say, Liam, we want to be a good supply chain partner. You know, we want to make great products. We don't want to copy. We don't want to build fake. We want to build real products. And we want to play in a global supply chain. And that's the difference with Chinese companies. Chinese companies are very, you know, when they start a business here, a lot of the time they'll think about being number one in the world, you know, being global and being the leader, global leader yeah. in their business, in the sector. You don't have a sense of that kind of um, ambition until you're here. You, know. you don't, and you can't understand this until you're here. But that's the other thing is they're very proud people, okay? And they're very, um, it's very ambitious, very entrepreneurial. You know, the one thing I suppose really in the past, I mean, they've been pretty weak at managing communications. Yeah. Uh, and that's been, a, that's been something they're weak at. They're not good at the marketing side, but they're going to improve at that. Tell me about some of the changes you've seen, because you've been here 12 years, and I, right. I was here just about that same time, in, at least in Shanghai, not, not yeah. Shenzhen. And it, the changes are immense. Change, changes are Americans huge. Americans can't understand. Yeah, you change. can't understand change here. I mean, you look at this this city, Shenzhen, 1984 had a population of um, 80,000 people. I think it was 2004. They said it was a population of 8 million. Wow. Right. So you go from in 20 years, you go from 80,000 to 8 million. Yeah. Well, that's huge. Today, it's probably somewhere in the region of about 12 million. No one knows. For entrepreneurs in the United States or in Israel or wherever who are thinking of trying to build a hardware company, what do they need to be aware of? I would say to build any company, I think, you know, first they got to travel. That's where you learn most. Even in, this, in a downturn like this, there are po <coughs> pockets of opportunities around the world. Um, and you've got to travel to find these pockets of opportunities. Yeah. 
tell me about the economy. What, how, you know, in the United States, we see uh, layoffs are happening, our jobless numbers are up, um, and this is, uh, what, mid-November 2008. What's happening here in China? So yesterday, We've the heard the growth is slowing down. It's so, yeah, it's, I mean, it's slowing, but it's relative. I mean, yesterday, the government announced a stimulus package here, package to, um, that, they, that they're going to inject quite a lot of money over the next couple of years into the economy to stimulate growth. Um, so I think you're going to see the domestic market here is going to grow quite a lot. Uh, the export market is still strong. Um, I think where we work and how we work is we take a product from the concept right through to the consumer. And that kind of insulates us from the, you know, we're not just dealing in components and shipping it somewhere else to be manufactured. So it's a very lean supply chain that we operate. Um, so we're finding a lot of our clients are moving towards this model because they find that it's, you know, it's faster to develop a product, but it also r reduces the risk because there's no inventory in the pipeline. Yeah. And in, in downturn, it, that's, you know, preserving cash is really important yeah. and protecting against risk. Well, thank you very much, and uh, it's real an honor Good. to meet you. Mm -hmm.